have you to say today? What do you have to say today? Hey guys, I'm Kristen, also known as Bull and Vine, here on my YouTube channel, on Instagram, where I'm most active when it comes to social media, on Ravelry, and pretty much everywhere else on the interwebs. I am Vol and Vine. And as always, I'm so happy that you're taking some time to chat about all the knitting, all the sewing, all the making, or whatever crafty rabbit hole I happen to be diving down this week. And yes, it's Valentine's Day, so happy V-Day to all those who celebrate. I am not huge on celebrating Valentine's Day. The only reason I celebrate it is because it's technically Dennis. Uh, my husband, it's technically our meetiversary, so, or not meetiversary, our dateiversary, when we officially decided, yeah, we're, we're gonna do this, let's, let's, we're, we're in a relationship, let's celebrate Valentine's Day together. But I will talk about that later in the blather segment, the segment where I chat about life stuff and all that fun stuff. Uh, but in the meantime, just a couple of announcements uh, before I get into what I've been making this week. Uh, we have a couple of knit-alongs that are happening all throughout the year of 2019. There's the Box of Socks knit along and the year of the garment knit along super fun super casual knit alongs uh, if you would like to partake hop on over to the Volan vine Ravelry group uh, that is the place to be where if you want to partake in these knit alongs or make alongs or just chat about the podcast uh, Or YouTube channel in general, so you should find uh, those knit alongs respective threads in in that group uh, And then I was also Someone who uh, tuned into last week's episode gave me the brilliant idea to start a new knit along uh, So I will be chatting about that later in the episode uh, But before I get into what I've been making this week uh, just a quick word for my awesome sponsor Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in design, business, tech, and more, even sewing and the fiber arts. As you probably know, I love learning new things when it comes to knitting, sewing, photography, or whatever crafty rabbit hole I happen to be diving down, which is why I'm all about binge watching classes on Skillshare. And because I know you love learning new things too, I partnered up with Skillshare and they are offering you, my viewers, two months free to try their platform. So give Skillshare a go and learn something new. Just click the link in the description box below and enter the code at checkout. Enjoy! And thanks Skillshare! And welcome back! Alright, so I teased a new knit along before the break and uh, this was a really great idea, suggestion from a viewer who tuned into last week's episode and that viewer is, I don't know your full name, but she is uh, on YouTube. She's Wool Needles Hands A Fiber Journey. I think that's the name of her uh, her her YouTube channel on, on the YouTubes. But anyway, thank you so much for this really awesome suggestion. I thought it was a great idea. Um, but if you tuned in last week, I'm, I'm super wordy today. <laughs> if you tuned in last week, uh, you know that I cast on the Brioque Pullover, a really awesome pattern by Stephen West. And yeah, um, as you can see, I did not make much progress on it. I did make another round of increases. Um, I was totally inspired to cast this on uh, when I went to a, a Stephen West class at Do You Knit uh, before my birthday. And Alana, who works at Do You Knit, she had a she was wearing her brioche pullover, and it was a total. I did not recognize the pattern that she was wearing compared to the version Stephen West was wearing as his sample on the Ravelry page. So I saw hers, and I was like, I want to cast one of those on. So you know, I purchased yarn for it, and here we are today with 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 this coral hot mess of wonderfulness. <laughs> That's how you can describe it, but it's bringing me so much joy to knit on. Um, and again, these are colorways that I would not normally gravitate towards, but or a pattern in general that I would immediately gravitate towards, but seeing her version and looking at the pattern again, I was able to see past the original sample and kind of put my own spin on it and here we are and I am thoroughly enjoying this pattern. And that was a lot of words to get to this point where I'm saying that um, this lovely viewer suggested that we start a knit along kind of um, in the spirit of going out of your own comfort zone when it comes to knitting things. So I thought that was brilliant and uh, yeah, I guess it, I'll, it, again, I'm all about doing super casual knit-alongs lately. So in a nutshell, this knit-along can mean whatever it wants to you, really. I mean, it, just as long as you feel like you're going out of your comfort zone with a knitting project. So in this case, I'm going out of my comfort zone by choosing a pattern that I normally wouldn't pick for myself, and I've chosen colors that I normally wouldn't pick for myself, but combined, they are making my heart sing. So 
uh, I feel like this is gonna be a win all around so uh, yeah I'm really happy I'm really happy where this project is going so in the same vein in the same spirit if you want to cast on a pattern that you have your eye on but you're not sure because the the project page the the sample on the project page is in knit in a crazy color scheme or something you can knit that but choose colors that you generally gravitate towards so you know you can kind of make it work for yourself or just you know, knit it because you want to knit it, um, or, you know, choose a pattern, or, or choose skeins from your stash, or go shopping, whatever you want to do, uh, picking colors that you really like, but you're too afraid to knit with because you're afraid you're going to wear it, and you, but in this case, if you just want to go for it, just for the pure joy of knitting with colors that you really like or admire lately, I'm looking at my stash, so that's why I'm looking off camera, um, but yeah, you get the gist, um, so I'm going to keep this, again, super loose. Uh, it's going to be three month knit along. Whips are welcome. You know, I would say, you know, about maybe 10 to 15 percent complete. Or, you know, if you if you're like about 10 percent to 15 percent into the project, those are totally welcome. Um, I don't have any set prizes in mind right now, but I'll come up with something, I'm sure. Uh, but yeah, this should be super fun. And thank you so much. Uh, I wish I knew your name, but uh, to... Oh, um, to wool needles hands a fiber journey thank you so much for suggesting it i think it's i think it's awesome so uh yeah i hope you guys are excited for that i will of course create a thread in the ravelry group uh, for those of you who want to join and yeah just start chatting posting your works in progress uh you know ideas for projects or colorways that you want to use uh let's get the conversation going and in case you're wondering about the details about this project i will pop uh, a link to my project page so you can learn about what yarns and weights and bases and needles and all that fun stuff uh in the description box below along with everything else that i chat about in this episode next up living in my hawthorne cottage craft project bag a wonderful gift from kate um is my tenya my tenya it is so close to being done you guys uh here it is so i just got a lot of ends a couple en ends to weave in but yeah we are almost done with sleeve island uh and i don't know if you can see i'll stand up so but i have one sleeve done and it is relatively long i think it is like just past like it comes to there on my on my arm so yeah, it is relatively longer than the pattern suggests. Uh, but yeah, here's where I am on the second sleeve. So we are making lots and lots of progress. And last week I mentioned that I had a little bit of a hiccup when it came, just a little bit, just a little bit. Uh, so after I separated the front and the back of the, of the sweater and shaped the neckline and joined, um, joined the sleeves, uh, I was ready to pick up uh, the stitches around the armhole and begin knitting the sleeves. So in the pattern, when you're ready to separate the front and the back of the sweater, uh, the pattern tells you to place um, X amount of uh, stitches under the arm on scrap yarn and then begin shaping uh, the shaping the, um, the armholes on the neckline and all that fun stuff. So it turns out I only put stitches on one side of the sweater on scrap yarn and I did not do that on the other side. So yeah, um, and after doing all that shaping and joining of sleeves, I was not looking forward to ripping all the way back and redoing it just to put a couple of stitches on armholes. No, that, that was not happening. So I assessed the situation and I realized, you know, it's under the arms, you cannot see it. I might know it's there, but honestly, I can fudge it. I can make it work. Um, and that's what I did. I, I made it work. I, and somehow you cannot tell heads nor tails that I made a mistake unless I lift up my arms and go, look, I made a mistake, which who, who does that? I, 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 maybe knitters do it to other knitters, but I don't do it to people. I don't know that especially aren't knitters because they're not going to realize that. And that was a really long ramble rant. But anyway, you get what I'm saying. Thank you so much to everybody who chimed in and, you know, with their concerns. Because, yeah, in the past, if I, I've i said with other previous projects, like, oh, that's not going to bother me. That's not going to bother me. And then it ends up bothering me. Yes, um, that has happened. However, with this project, I feel like it won't bother me because I can't even see it. Um, and, it and I've tried this on several times and you cannot, everything looks fine. It looks like a sweater should look when you're wearing it. Um, so yeah, I think, I think 
we're out of the woods with this one. So I'm really, really excited to have it off the needles. Oh my gosh, you guys, I, every time I try this on, like as I'm knitting it, no matter what outfit I'm wearing, this color just goes with everything. It's just, it's like my, per it's my perfect brown. I mean, I don't generally wear brown, but this is like the perfect shade of brown gray. It's like a very cool brown, I want to say. Um, and the yarn is Viola uh, in her dark, uh, her frozen, I always want to say dark earth, but it's frozen earth colorway. Um, and it's her sock yarn held together with uh, a strand of mohair. Uh, and I purchased this at Indian Tangled last year in October. And you guys could not recommend this yarn more. Um, and again, I did not, I did not uh, alternate skeins at all. So it's, it's perfect. I love it, you know? So anyway, very, very excited. This is definitely going to be coming with me to Edinburgh Yarn Festival, which is coming up super quick, you guys. I think it's coming up in like five weeks, which is crazy, crazy. Oh my gosh, I can't wait. Cannot wait. Um, so yeah, what else did I want to say about this pattern? Uh, yeah, this is what the, the base, the base or the bottom looks like. So it kind of does like this A-line out. Um, so it's going to be super comfy and... Yeah. I, I can't remember the last time I was super pumped about a project like this, but just everything came together so well. Um, yeah, despite the snafu under the armholes, you know, whatever. Um, but the other crazy thing is when I went to pick up the stitches around each armhole, I somehow ended up with the same stitch count. Go figure. I don't know how that worked out, but I'm not questioning it. I'm really not questioning it. It looks fine when I wear it, so if it ain't broke, I'm not gonna fix it. <laughs> just a little broken, but you know, no one has to know that but me. And you guys, just don't tell. That was a random stream of consciousness, but you know, if you watch this podcast, you know I'm prone to doing that. So anyway, that is my Tenya, a wonderful pattern by Caitlin Hunter, who is Boylan Knitworks. Um, could not recommend this pattern, the yarn, more. It's wonderful. Yeah. Believe it or not, that is all the knitting I have to share with you this week. Uh, but I do have some sewing to share with you as well. Um, nothing super successful, but there has been sewing. <laughs> but first of all, let's talk about what I'm wearing. Uh, this is the Anna Dress, a really awesome pattern by By Hand London. Uh, they have... Uh, this was one of the first dresses I've ever sewn or one of the first dress patterns that I've ever sewn successfully. <laughs> um, and it's still one of my favorite makes to this date. I just don't, I haven't been wear for some reason I haven't been wearing this, um, as often as I really would like to. Uh, mainly I think it's because it's blue and I don't normally gravitate towards blue, but I feel like the combination, because the base is navy and there are little pops of kind of mauve and teal and lavender and whatnot and they're little tiny sparkly bees. I don't know if you can see that. But there are these little metallic bees right here. Um, but yeah, this is such a great pattern. I highly recommend it for beginner sewists as well because it teaches you all about pleats and darts and um, shaping and it's just an all-around great, pretty, you know, flouncy pattern uh, if you are into that style. Um, and yeah, this dress is completely my style. I love like fitted bodices and gathered skirts. It just oh, it makes my heart sing. So I'm really glad to have this back in rotation. Um, again, as I mentioned, this was one of uh, my first uh, successful makes. It fits me well. Um, however, there are a couple things that I would like to adjust on this, especially like the, um, the facings on the inside. Um, I, I, I think it's before, yes, this was definitely before I purchased my serger. So I cleaned up the, the raw edges using zigzag stitches and it's just a little wonky. So I think I, I want to, you know, do a pass with my serger just to kind of like neaten that up. And then also the hemline. Um, yeah, it, I'm way better when it comes to hemming dresses these days, but th this definitely, um, I'm looking at it now, needs some love because, so this is the underside, like what is that? Why is there that flap right there? <laughs> so I may just unpick this and re-hem it, like take the serger and just kind of clean up the edges and anyway, re-hem it, uh, but honestly it really doesn't, it looks fine from the outside to the naked eye, it's just, you know, from far away, but only, again, it's like I've made, I made the dress so I know all these little mistakes that are happening throughout, but honestly, you really can't, 
anyone walking by would not notice all these little, you know, glitches and whatnot. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Yeah, again, a really great pattern by, by Hand London. I will post a link to it in the down bar or um, in the description box below. Um, the fabric is double gauze and I believe, I wanna say cotton and steel. I wanna say cotton and steel, but I'm not 100% sure, but uh, yeah, this, I, it's if you if you know me, I love sewing with double gauze. It's just it just has such a nice hand to it. It's soft, it's comfortable, um, and not as stiff as quilting cotton by any means. Um, and so, yeah, highly recommend it. Um, but yeah, I did get some sewing done over the weekend, and let me go get it. Okay, so this dress did not pan out as well as I would have liked it to. Uh, speaking of double gauze, this is also double gauze that has been burning a hole in my fabric stash for a while now. You can probably tell why. It's it's this lovely purplish shade of mauve, <laughs> and I, I love the way it goes with my complexion and everything. Um, and this is a dress by Chalk and Notch. It's the fringe dress, and this has been kind of, you know, another pattern that I've been sitting on for a while and finally got around to making it this weekend. However, um, while the pattern does suggest double gauze as a, you know, as a fabric to sew, sew it up as, um, I feel like this double gauze is a lot thicker than the double gauze that I'm currently wearing. Um, and it's just a little too thick for the actual pattern. Um, especially because it has these um, gathered sleeve details. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, yeah, the, the sleeves in general come out like that. So it kind of has like this, I want to say kimono style happening. Uh, and then you, you sew these tabs on the inside and then you lift them up and you're supposed to button them to the sleeve. So it has like this kind of, you know, really interesting gathered sleeve detail. Um, and yeah, it, it's the gauze is just a little too thick for my liking and it makes this kind of bulky. And then in general, I didn't really, in hindsight, I should have realized that this style would not suit me to begin with because, um, you know, especially during the winter time, like this is a thick fabric. This is a fabric that I would, you know, get a lot of use out, out of during the winter because it's, you know, it's snuggly and it's heavy and whatnot. Um, but wearing this under a coat or a sweater would not be conducive, um, even if it wasn't gathered. I mean, this would just be bunched up inside the sleeves and it would just be really uncomfortable to begin, begin with. Um, but yeah, otherwise, you know, it's a really easy construction. You know, I would definitely, if I were to make this again, I would definitely make it out of Chalie fabric, which is, you know, cotton, but it has a really nice drape to it. And I would make the other version that has shorter sleeves that aren't gathered. Um, so they do give you that option. Uh, but yeah, and the other thing I was saying, I'm I, lately I've been drawn to this style of kind of like a boxy, um, a boxy dress with a gathered skirt. Um, I don't know, I've just been seeing that around a lot and I really like the look of it, but for me, I think it's just not a suitable style, a look for me, or I just don't feel myself when I wear this style. So I think, I need to just kind of stay away from those patterns. I know I tried making the metamorphous, metamorphic dress, um, a pattern by So Liberated, which Emily ended up adopting <laughs> and it looks great on her, but it just wasn't suiting me per se. Um, so, you know, I should just learn my lesson now and just stay away from those patterns because they don't really generally work out for me. Um, but yeah, it's, I don't know what will become of this. <laughs> Emily, if you want this one, you can totally have it. But yeah, I just have to sew the buttons on and it'll be done. Um, I might just finish it to finish it and I don't know, see what, you know, just wear it around the house, who knows. Uh, but yeah, that is the, <laughs> that is, this is the fringe dress by Chalk and Notch. Nothing wrong with the pattern, really easy construction. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what I sewed. I just feel a little bit kind of discouraged, not discouraged, but disappointed is the word. Uh, because yeah, I, I spent pretty much all of Saturday working on this and it just, it's not something that really resonates with me. Um, but you know what? It's, I chalk it up to a learning experience. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to let that deter me. So the next sewing project, I started sewing this last night and this is a really quick pattern. You guys, I think I'm going to finish this after I'm done recording. Uh, but I thought actually, uh, backstory, Emily, who is slow fashion rebel, she works for me and she's my friend. Um, 
she had sewn a pair of boxer briefs for her boyfriend and I thought, you know, okay, it's Valentine's Day. I want to make something special for Dennis for Valentine's Day and I thought a pair of boxer briefs would be awesome also. Um, she actually ended up using a different pattern. Uh, I ended up using a pattern by Wardrobe by Me and it's their version of the boxer briefs and here's where I am with them. <laughs> Yeah, so I went stash diving. I had some scrap fabric left over from a lady skater dress that I made, I want to say like two years ago. And yeah, these are so funny, guys. It's, I don't know if you can tell, but they're, let me see, little squids, octopi. Yeah, we love octopus. So I thought these were perfectly fitting for a pair of boxer briefs. Um, but yeah, here's the front. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so I don't, uh, I took his measurements, so hopefully, hopefully they will fit him. The only thing I'm concerned about is that this, uh, jersey fabric doesn't have much stretch to it. I mean, it does stretch, but it's not, it doesn't bounce back as easily, I want to say. Um, it's a very dense cotton, I want to say. Like, not, it's, I want to say it's more like a medium weight jersey fabric, but... You know, uh, all I really have to do now is attach the the waist elastic and hem the hem the legs. But I want to say this came together in about under an hour. What I have here so far, so um, you know, fingers crossed, it fits and he will like them. And you know, um, here's the inside if you want to see what that looks like. So here you can see the inner workings. Uh, so this part right here is double layered, and then I use a narrow zigzag stitch. Um, to sew everything together and then I cleaned up all the edges using my serger um, throughout so yeah they they really do look like they could be store-bought so far fingers crossed it'll everything will fit where it needs to and if not I will make a different pair um, but yeah really super quick fun project easy gift for a, a gentleman in your life um, yeah, so highly recommend that. So that's it for all the projects that I have right now, uh, but I do have some new patterns that I wanna share with you that um, kind of caught my eye. Uh, this has been on my, I guess, like to sew list for a while, and it seems really out of my comfort zone, or I don't, not so much, not so much. The shaping is very similar to the Anna dress, what I'm wearing right now, I wanna say, just like in the, um, the bust shaping and whatnot. But this has been a pattern, you've probably seen it floating around the interwebs or wherever, or Joanne, wherever you shop for patterns, but it's a pattern by Simplicity, um, and it's dot, the Dotty Angel Frock Dress. So it's Simplicity 1080. And yeah, it's very, it's very kind of, um, this would be a dress that I just kind of throw on to wear around the house type of thing. Uh, and I like the fact that it uses like all these contrasting fabric so you can have like a lot of fun with different prints and everything and yeah I don't know why I'm just so drawn to this pattern or this style because I think it kind of reminds me of like the 1920s and it just has that very kind of like I can't describe it but I love the pockets it would be perfect to work like if I'm working downstairs I love anything with pockets because I'm constantly walking around with my you know listening to an audiobook or a podcast so I always ha love a pocket that I can put my um, my iPhone in. But yeah, I ordered I ordered some fabric to make this guy, and then uh, this pattern. I it took me a while to hunt down. This is actually a um, an out of print pattern that I saw floating around Pinterest, um, and I'll try and pop a photo of that dress here. But I want to make this so badly. Um, and again, this is a discontinued pattern, but I finally tracked it down on Amazon. I think there was one left. And this is Threads Simplicity 2591. But again, this is one of those patterns where you can't be fooled by what you see on the cover um, because I originally fell in love with the version that I saw on Pinterest and then when I tracked it down and I saw this, I was like, huh, that's not, is that the same pattern? But, but if you look at it, you can just omit this button band right here and it just has this really cool, I don't know, like I can't describe it. I just love the shape of it. Um, so yeah, really excited to, make one of these. So that said, I am gonna move along to the blather segment, a segment where I chat about what's been happening in my life, should you care to stick around. But uh, just a quick uh, word about my shop update that's happening this weekend. Uh, if you don't know, I am the dyer behind Vine Yarns. I have my own online yarn shop. I dye yarn, 
as I do. <laughs> and I'm gonna be having another shop update this Saturday, February 16th at 9 a.m. Eastern time. And I technically refer to this as my international shop update, uh, just, you know, to give others around the world who don't normally, who aren't normally able to make my Friday updates, uh, just a chance to snag some yarn for my updates. Um, so I hope you guys can make it. And again, as I always say every week, if you wanna keep it looped in about what colorways and bases will be in the shop for the update, uh, just sign up for the newsletter by going to my website, bullenbindyarns.com, entering your email, and every week you will get notified about all that fun stuff. Um, so yeah, that said, I'm gonna move along to what's been happening in my life. Um, yeah, <laughs> I always, I'm always kind of like, what is going on in my life when I hit this segment? Um, I went to the dentist yesterday. Uh, that was not fun. Uh, thankfully it was only, like you really wanna know what happened when I go to the dentist. But anyway, I hate going to the dentist. The only reason I did go to the dentist is because dentist scheduled the appointment for me. Otherwise I really just, I can't, I can't pull the trigger on, on that type of thing, but you know, thank goodness for Dennis. Otherwise I would, I would have no teeth today. <sighs> I need to grow up. I really need to grow up sometimes an adult, but you know, that's how I roll. So anyway, thank you, Dennis, if you were watching for making my dentist appointment. <laughs> that was totally random, but I'm trying to think what else. Yeah, this weekend I am just gonna be, some friends of ours are coming in town, so we're gonna have some brunch with them, but for the most part, I'm just gonna be hunkering down knitting, sewing, finishing my tenya, hoping to get some photos of that. Um, and I'm trying to think what else. Yeah, the new the new dye studio, uh, all of the new equipment. Thank you so much to everybody for all, you know, your um, congratulations and everything. I'm so happy with my new, my new dye equipment. It's just been going so well. Um, so really, really pumped about that. Really excited to have that ticked off of my um, my 19 for 2019 list. Uh, so yeah, we're just kind of plowing through that. Um, yeah, so I'm trying to think. I don't, honestly guys, nothing else is happening. So instead of talking your ear off, I'm just gonna end it there. So <laughs> thank you so much again for hanging out with me this week, guys. Again, I hope you guys have a happy Valentine's Day if you celebrate or just some fun plans for the evening. Uh, and until then, I will see you next time. Happy knitting, bye. <laughs> What you doing, baby, huh? What are those naughty birdies up to? You wanna go say hi to the naughty birdies? What are they up to? Are they teasing you? Yeah? I'm gonna make it about a three month long, long knit along. Whips are completely well, blah, 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 blah